So now that our conductor's prepped and we're ready to install, we want to take a look at the product. And we want to obviously uh, determine which of the two subsets we want to install first. So when you look at the subsets, in this case, like I said, we have two, but you'll notice that the two subsets have different numbers of rods. One has five and one has four. We always want to look at installing the subset with the most rods first. It, it simplifies the application and speeds it along. So what we'll do is we'll take the first subset, we'll center it over the splice. We want to make sure that the center of the cabled section is roughly in the center of the splice. Then we'll go ahead and wrap at the crossover mark and continue to wrap that leg all the way to completion. Now when you get to a certain point, two or three pitches from the end, you can go ahead and split the rod ends to simplify, and we recommend this, to simplify the application. You can split them into you know, even subsets. You can even split them down to single rods if, if, if you need to. But once you get them reduced in a number of subsets, it will simplify the snapping of the rod ends of the splice shunt and ensure that for ensure proper application. Once you get that entire leg wrapped in, come back to the cabled section and you want to wrap that cabled section around the existing splice. It will now not only be nice and tight against that and it provides for a nice application of the second crossover mark. So now at this point I can go ahead and wrap that leg in and when you're wrapping it in, make sure you grab it, push away, and then wrap. You want a big circle so you don't pinch that leading wire. Again, you get to a certain point that's convenient. You go ahead and split your legs. You can split it, like I said, you can split them down to individual rods if needed. and then wrap both subsets in and snap them in place. Now you'll take the second subset, which is four rods, and you'll go ahead and match up the color mark so it lays in, hold it, and then wrap that leg in. Again, wrap down to a convenient location, and we recommend, uh, especially on the larger splice shunts, split the legs. It will assist in the application and then snap those in place. Okay, once that leg is complete, you can come back to your crossover mark. Again, take that cabled section, wrap it around the splice, bring it around, and again, your crossover mark lands right where you need it to land. Go ahead and wrap that leg in, making sure you have a big circle as you're wrapping it. You get to a convenient location. Go ahead and split the legs. Create two smaller subsets. Go ahead and snap that in. And now you have a splice shunt that's installed over a compression or automatic that will bust the current and ensure that you don't have a weak spot, a high, high temperature location, or a possible failure in the future. And this concludes the application of the PLP splice shunt on a conductor splice. For more information on this product, please visit our website at plp.com.